Ryan, are you a dinosaur? Congressman, are you becoming extinct? Or can Democrats and Republicans find the middle ground that you aspire and mention? Well, look, I think our politics should be anchored from the middle in terms of solving problems. We're not going to we're not going to address the big stuff, uh, spending to name just one. Uh, if, if we don't anchor things from the center. But I think, uh, to Kevin's point, uh, in this election season, uh, Republicans have to focus on the economy honey, humming, uh, addressing the opiate epidemic and keeping America secure, and point to the fact that Democrats really are just looking to investigate everything under the sun. Of course, the Democrats are going to turn around and turn this election into a referendum on, the pre on President Trump and his unfavorability ratings in uh, districts such as mine. So it is shaping up to be a very fascinating political season, Tom. The zeitgeist right now is suburban women with all the uproar within the beltway. How do Republicans, and particularly purple state Republicans, how do they push against a president to garner those votes? Well, you have to get beyond the president. And by that, I mean, you have to accept that some people are not going to like what the president says, certainly, and even some of what he does. Focus on your own message, what you've done in your district. Focus on how your votes have improved the economy how we've helped keep America secure, and also some of those kitchen table issues. Like I mentioned, the opiate epidemic is one. We've increased NIH funding. There are a number of, uh, we've, we've uh, made our schools safer. We've, there's a lot of areas where I think we can point to where we've done good work, mm -hmm. but uh, let's just be honest. Uh, president Trump dominates almost every single news cycle, and so you do have to break with the president at times when he says things that are off color. And if you don't, if you don't, those 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 uh, voters, those suburban women who view Trump unfavorably right. are not going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Congressman, you are arguably the definitive gerrymandered congressman from sea to shining sea. You have lived it. How do we need to improve a process that America desperately wants, which is to straighten out these complex, stupid districts? What have you learned in this process? that no matter what you do, someone is going to complain. One person's definition of fair district is another person's interpretation of a gerrymandered district. I think the most important thing is that we have compactness. <clears throat> Uh, and if you have compactness and you look at a map, you can say, okay, there's some logic to that. Our counties are not drawn in perfect shapes. Our school districts are not drawn in perfect shapes in terms of geography. So there's going to be some kind of meandering element to a lot of these districts. But having some compactness standard, I think, is the single most important thing that we should aspire to in terms of redistricting. I would also say it has always been viewed as a political exercise. Our founding fathers have even recognized that and it is a political process. We vote for state reps and state senators and governors who are who are charged with drawing these districts. So you can't, you know, we can't be so naive as to think that we can remove all political considerations from redistricting because there's always going to be some in it. Congressman, do Republicans worry about speaking up against President Trump? Are they fearful of repercussions? I think for some, that's the case. Remember, there are a lot of districts in this country that are very, very pro-Trump. There's also some that are very, very anti-Trump. But I still think at the end of the day, a lot of voters go to the polls and they can separate what the institution of the presidency is from the institution of Congress. And Congress, by, by the Constitution, is charged with being a check and balance on any president. And so you have to, I think, speak up when you disagree with any president. In, in my case, I think some of the trade issues are of concern and also some of his some of the things that he says. So I, I do think in especially competitive districts, you do have to speak up. But you also need to say where you agree with the president, even if you're a Democrat. And that's where I think the Democrats may get themselves in trouble. If, if all they're going to do is just be anti-Trump, that's not going to sell well, I don't think. But do you worry about the U.S. democracy if people are afraid to speak up? What does that tell us about the state of the institutions? Well, then, then the institution of Congress is not working. And that's where I think uh, Republicans in seats like mine are best advised to speak up when they disagree with the president. 
Congressman, one more question, if we could. And this goes back to what Mike Allen writes up in Axios today about the Republican identity crisis. What does the GOP need to do to re-identify, you know, after the huge shock and success of the president's victory, what do Republicans coast to coast need to do to re-identify and find a 21st century identity? I think that if you look at what we've done on the economic growth side, we need to make sure that we are, uh, we are marrying that with workforce development training, a 21st century education. College is great for some. We need to make sure that those curriculums are translating to uh, good industries and good jobs. Those that don't go to college, we're making sure, I mean, 3D manufacturing is but one example where you don't have to have a college degree uh, to get into that space. Uh, the, the entire the, the technology platforms which are really driving economic growth are areas where we need to make sure that we're not leaving people behind and that those dislocated workers do have economic opportunity. To me, that's the 21st century message that is beyond partisanship, but uh, the Republican Party needs to make sure that they're speaking to all voters on that.